Hello you guys, welcome to my channel. Okay, so we need to talk. We need to talk. So, I was on, I wish I could film like at the moment of inspiration. This is as close as I can get without being gross or impractical. So I was on the treadmill and I was watching all these videos and then um, about, you know, YouTube channels and stuff. And I realized that, you know, as a niche, if I were to pick a niche, it would be art. And I was like, you know, a lot really goes into artwork. People want to sell artwork for like, you know, oh, hey, I'll pay 15 bucks for that. I'll pay like 25 bucks for that. Or hey, man, can I have it for free? And I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. And because a lot really goes into artwork. So what I'm going to start doing is like the making of for artwork. Maybe I'll post like the artwork to the Patreon. And then there'll be this video that is a, a full length feature about, you know, the planning, the inspiration, the ups, the downs, the crying, the, the laughter, the jokes. And that way people can get emotionally attached to artwork. I've heard some people say you want to always, you know, ask more questions and answers. But I actually like answers. I like to know what went into the artwork. I like to know the story behind the artwork. I like to get it attached. I like to know what the artist meant, why they meant it, because honestly to draw anything takes a lot of time, focus, dedication. To render something takes endless hours. It takes, it's monotonous and it takes like all your brain power, all your effort, all your emotions and nothing is random to an artist. Even though art may seem random, and sometimes it is random as hell. I mean, it is random, but the artist is not random. The artist is like, executes things. And there are some artists that do that differently, but I wanna show my artistic process. I wanna interview other artists to show their artistic processes, maybe live as them for a day and have them take me through their journey they're making of. So I wanna start doing, I wanna make art cool again. I wanna make a movie. No, I'm just kidding, but I, I wanna make, art like, you know, something that inspires people and intrigues people. I want to show and document the story behind an artwork, behind an artist, behind their lifestyle, how they live. Because when I go to the museum, I the thing I love the most about going to a museum is getting to know the artist. If you go to the Salvador Dali Museum, you get to know so much about the artist. If you get to see Ferreira, you get to know about how she lived, why she lived that way, what she meant in her artwork, why she did it. Was it emotional? Was it to show pain and suffering? Was it to show happiness? You get to know what's important to them. And when you fall in love with the artist, you fall in love with the artwork. And um, I feel like that this is a great social platform to show why art is magic and why art is phenomenal and why art is priceless and why art is a piece of that person's life. And I, there are some people who make art at like a factory, but there are stories of heartfelt artists that, you know, do art. And you do the puka. You do the puka. This is my chihuahua puka. Mm -hmm. Actually, this might be who I'm doing my first artwork about because puka so cute. And the story about puka is that we got puka from um, a good friend of ours that recently passed away. And, um, we got her dogs and we love them and we've given them a good home. We promised to take care of them. So um, the story about the picture with Puka is that she, I was eating some turkey after one of my breaks at work. And by the way, that's another thing too, is I do work a lot. So I wanna post like, you know, about the life of an artist. Sometimes it gets very busy, it's very chaotic. Some people are like, why does it take forever for you to do art? Well, bitch, this is why. <laughs> and you get to enjoy the movie too. Oh, so you was eating snacks the whole time. Precisely. So, um, I was eating turkey and uh, Puka had a whole mouthful of dog food, but she didn't want her dog food that day. She came up to me, dropped all like five pieces of kibble onto the floor to go eat the turkey. I just laughed so hard at it and it was so funny. So I'm gonna do a sketch of Puka and see if I can turn it maybe into a little artwork or, you know, I guess I'm gonna call this phase is inspiration. So the moment when the artist gets inspired, the moment when the artist gets, um, like they feel like they wanna do artwork again. Maybe they get out of their slump, their rut, their depression, 
because there's two modes of an artist. There's the mode where you absorb, and there's the mode where you create. And when you absorb, it's just as important as creating. When you don't create, you sit there and you reflect on your past work. You learn new techniques. You learn from other artists. You actually live your life and think of yourself as a computer. You upload this stuff into your imagination. And then afterwards, you get to a point where you, um, you want to exert whatever is in your imagination. And um, this is something that I want to definitely talk about because I feel a lot of artists go, oh, I haven't done art in a while lately. I feel really depressed. And you shouldn't feel depressed about that. You shouldn't feel sad about it. You shouldn't feel upset about it. That's actually very important. And when I do take these little hiatuses, I improve 150% to the point where I'm almost a different artist completely. And I think that it is healthy that you do step away, you step back and you reflect on, is my is my work good? Is it where I want it to be? Is this my legacy? Don't overthink it, but you know, kind of live your life, get new inspiration, get new references and stay fresh, you know? So I think that there's on seasons and I think there's off seasons for an artist. And um, I guess I'm gonna go out look at Pinterest for the day and um, look at inspiration and I'm gonna probably journal and vlog some of my inspiration and why I feel that it's good, it's creative and why I'm drawn to it. So I'm going to probably eat breakfast, continue the rest of my day because yes, we do have normal lives too. I don't have the luxury yet of being a full-time artist. So I have to work full-time at a job and that makes a decent amount of money. Najan's snickering back there, but it's the truth, like this is a life of an artist beginning. And this is the journey of an artist. And you know, I hope that, you know, the patrons and people and other artists appreciate this because I feel like it's educational, it's informative, and it actually shows the breakdown of what goes into being an artist or going into being me. Like some people might be like, can't relate and that's okay, but you should document what you can relate to because I feel like artists, have a story and I feel like that story needs to be told so um, this is me showing my intent I feel like when you start an artwork it's about intent and um, you should definitely set your intentions like I feel like a lot of I practice a lot of yoga I practice a lot of Buddhism a lot of spiritualism and I feel like you should have intent when you start anything you should put it out there to the universe, like what your intentions are. When you sit down to do yoga in your first pose and your first breath, you know, I intend to heal. I intend to work on this. I intend to work on my gratitude. I intend to work on, um, I'm intending right now to, you know, of course, work on my gratitude as always and um, show people a story and aspect of artists that doesn't always get told. And I feel like it's compelling and it should be told and it's great content because it's genuine. It's my life I'm sharing with you and it's things that are personal to me, things that I honestly truly care about. And I feel like when you bring authenticity to the table, you always bring good content because it comes from a place that resonates with a lot of people. And <coughs> um, I'm excited for this journey and I can't wait to find content that maybe um, inspiration, artwork, references, because I do work from references. I'm not going to lie, I will credit the artist, but I do work from references. And um, sometimes I don't know who the artist is, but if you guys can give shout outs and tell me who these artists are sometimes, I look for things that move me. So I'm gonna search around on Pinterest endlessly for maybe a few days until I can compile like a montage or an image that I feel like I would like to render and take elements from different things because I am one of these types of artists. I take elements from different pieces that, you know, I'm like, I want a moon, but I want this moon because I work very closely from reference. I work very, I'm very, I like things laid out a certain way. So I'm going to look around and see what I can find and see what moves me and what compels me and what kind of colors I'd like to use and, you know, kind of play my that. So I'm just not that my door. But I think, did you knock on the door or was that you? <laughs> my dogs are foolish. So he knocked on the countertop and my dogs think it's so enough to go 
They're flighty little animals. They really are. Welcome to Chihuahuas. But I'll let you guys go for now. Look forward to hearing from y'all soon.